3,000 miles, I think it's time for another oil change. Maybe I'm not supposed to, but let me tell you why I will be. Hey, Rainbow here. How you doing? It is time for the 10,000 mile oil change. Actually, it's time for the 5,000 mile oil change. Now, before you say something, number one, uh, the first oil change was done by the dealer. That was during the break in period. It's supposed to be at uh, about 600 miles. I had it done at 720 miles. Right now, I have a little over 5,000, and I'm going to do it again. According to the manual, I only need it done every 9,000, which means basically I could have had it done at about 10,000 miles. But I'm not paying the dealer to do it, I'm doing it myself, which cuts the cost to less than half of what it would cost to take it to the dealer. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that I want to take care of the bike. Now, 5,000 miles, which means I basically put a little over 4,000 miles on the bike, but I am not liking the color of the oil. I think it looks a little bit dark for me. Um, the other thing is, is I'm in South Florida and it is hot. There's a lot of stop and go traffic, although the clear majority of the miles on this thing are on the highway and uh, similar to highways, but um, it's hot and I use it every day. I commute to work with it. So a lot of times it's used to those little six, seven mile trips back and forth, back and forth every day, twice a day, plus the long trips I take. Now I have put 5,000, over 5,000 miles on this in pretty much exactly two months. So uh, I am using the bike and it's getting used. So I choose to change it at 5,000 miles. So let's take a look at how we do it. As you can see, the oil, it's a little bit dark for me. It wasn't even this dark when I had the first service done at 720 miles when the engine was just breaking in. It's not horrible if you really look through it, but it's a lot darker than it needs to be. By the way, it's also over full, and it has been over full since the first servicing. When I picked up the bike, it was perfect. After the first servicing, it was over full, but not by much. When you, you know, put the bike at a bit of an angle, you see it come down. So I just let it go. Don't believe it's caused me any problems. It's been in for service since then, so they clearly would have seen it. So anyway, just showing you that. So one of the first things we have to do is take this off. In order to take it off, we're going to have four of these bolts to take out. Let's look at that next. For this job, to get all four of these out, you are going to need, let's start with a six mil. And as you'll see, the rear brake is kind of in the way. But bottom line is you'll take this off right here. Let's move on to the next. Okay, so once you take the bottom ones off on each side, this will slide out of the way, okay? And then on the other side, you're gonna see what we could access. Now, one of the important things you wanna do is make sure that your engine is warmed up, okay? Don't scald yourself on it, but make sure that your engine is warmed up so that that oil can be thinned out a little bit, warm, and it'll come out a lot nicer and quicker. All right, the two things we're gonna be concerned about are gonna be the drain plug down here on the right and the oil filter cap. Right here, there's these three bolts that hold it in. Might get a little bit tricky. I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. All right, so the drain plug is gonna be a 14 millimeter, okay? And then the three for the cap that hold in the oil filter are gonna be eight millimeter, okay? Uh, probably with how small they are, I would recommend using a quarter inch drive. Number one, because it's easy to find something that small. Number two, so you don't over torque them. Again, we're gonna to get to what we're gonna do with this right here, all right? Now, of course, you have to have something to drain into. I have something I've never used before. It's from, it's a Pittsburgh, that's from Harbor Freight. It's not really deep, but it will certainly hold more than enough. So I'm gonna suspect I'm gonna have a bit of a mess here as this is gonna splash around on me. 
Let's get this. And there's the crush washer out. Oh yeah, it is going everywhere, just like I suspected it would. I'm making quite the mess. Wow, that is some wicked color coming out of there. That is some wicked color coming out. And it's going all over my lens. Can't even go down fast enough. Yep, yeah, made a complete and total disaster mess out of this. I don't know why I use fancy stuff like this. I really should just stick with what I know best and grew up with. Yeah, now I got a big mess to clean. Well, hey, there we go. You know what? And I knew it was going to happen. I prepared by having rags out and it still shot out a lot farther than I thought it was. All right, so I'm going to open up the cap, the fill cap on the other side so that it helps to drain it out a little bit more. And then I'm going to clean up and get back to this mess all over my camera. <laughs> all right. I still have a big mess to clean up, but uh, now with your eight millimeter, go ahead and crack these loose here. And if you're going to look for torque specs on these, I don't know. I don't have. I'm just going to torque them to what I believe is the good enough method that I've been using for decades uh, without any problems. So we will see what happens. So just get these three out. Again, this is eight millimeter. There we go. There's one. And let's get number two out. Yeah, I know you're in the way. Not, not ready yet. Number two. Okay, so here is the not so tricky part. So this cap is actually threaded, all right? It's threaded larger than the size of the screws, the bolts technically that I just took out, okay? I don't want to get in here and try to pry this. So what I did is I bought some eight millimeter bolts, right? And I'm just going to put these eight millimeter bolts in and slowly rotate around, okay? And push this out. That's what this is designed for, okay? Maybe Ducati has a special tool or something. I don't know. I don't really care. And then with the ones that I bought, looks like these are a 10 millimeter. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just slowly try to evenly adjust these to try to just push this outward, just draw it out is what I'm trying to do, all right? To kind of break the seal because this cap has two O-rings that are kind of holding it in place and I really don't want to jam this thing out or pry it out with a screwdriver or anything because I just feel like if I do that, I'm gonna end up damaging the case or something like that and then, you know, give uh, Ducati a reason to deny, you know, a you know, future claim or warranty claim or something like that. So anyway, that's all I'm doing is I'm just getting it out, trying to get it relatively even. All right, we've already broken the seal. And then once I get this to a certain point, I can feel it. Then I'll go ahead and I can pry it out probably with my fingers at this point. And at this point, it's probably what I can do so I can feel how loose this is. So, yeah, these are all loose. So now, except this one. Okay, there we are. And it comes out. And as you can see, inside is my filter. So we'll go ahead and pull that filter out next. All right, so I just really put my finger there and popped this off. And now it should be easy for this filter to just pull right out. And we're gonna let this thing drain for a little while so that we get as much out of it as we possibly can and uh, get it all 
cleaned up and ready to go. Um, I will be putting some O-rings on here and a crush washer on the drain plug. See, now it doesn't look too bad, but coming out, it looked, looked pretty bad. Again, this is a 5,000 mile oil change. Um, I am electing to do this. I will see what it looks like at 10,000. And because I'm doing it myself, I'm doing it for less than half of what it would cost to have Ducati do it. So, hey, what the hell? Why not be a little proactive with your maintenance and keep your receipts and document. All right, so you're gonna replace these two O-rings. They're the same exact size, all right? And they're gonna go right here in these two grooves. Make sure you clean everything up really well. Uh, get any kind of dirt or debris off of them uh, totally and completely. And then before I put these on, they look dry, I lubricate them with clean oil that we're gonna be using in the engine all right it makes things a lot easier once you lubricate everything to get this stuff on and functional all right they're just regular everyday o-rings i don't see anything fancy about them there's no uh, they're just round o-rings okay so lubricate them really well and kind of set it to the side on a clean cloth all right so I didn't show you with me doing it, but you can tell by all the oil on there. So it's nice and oiled up with fresh, clean oil. The two O-rings are in place. Get that ready and keep that on a nice, clean and cover it with a nice, clean shop towel. Also, make sure that you clean up your drain plug and put a new washer on it, or it's a brand new crush washer. So that's going to be part of the, it's not really a kit. You have to buy everything separate and that's going to go in there. Uh, Pretty soon when I'm ready, I'm going to take a little bit of stuff out of there and then we're going to put the new filter in. All right. So let's do that now. Just want to wipe this up, make sure I have pretty much everything I can find in there. All right. And then this only goes in one way. Okay. Get the new one in, put it to the back. Boom. It locks in place and you are all set and ready to go to reverse and put the cap back in. Okay, so now it's time to put the cap back on. It only fits one way. These grooves go up and down and the two go to the back. It really only fits one way. But it's imperative that this is all lubricated, all right? Around here, I put a little bit of oil and on the O-rings because we don't want to start pressing in anything when it's dry, okay? So we'll just try to get that started a little bit. All right, and maybe draw it in evenly with the screws. All right, one of the things that I did was I put a little bit of blue Loctite on here just so this doesn't back out. This is certainly one component you never wanna back out. And the important thing with any kind of O-rings here uh, is that you draw everything in evenly all the way around so that you don't bind it or pinch the o-ring in any wrong direction so we're going to go ahead and start tightening this up okay testing okay so again nice and even pressure all the way around and make sure that they are good and tight and that is about where something this size should be okay so now that part's good i think we've let it drain for about an hour or so so maybe it's time to put the plug in all right so everything is cleaned up the Drain plug is all cream. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Okay, so everything is cleaned up. The drain plug is nice and clean. There's a brand new crush washer on it. And now it's time to go ahead and see if we can stop this in just enough time to get the new stuff in. I doubt it. You see how it's still coming out? Well, nothing you can really do about that. All right, unless you wanna wait for another two years. You're gonna have oil dripping out. So 
We're going to get it the best we can, make sure it's nice and clean surface. It is what it is. And the crush washer will do its job once we put this in place. Okay. And again, as a reminder, this is a 14 millimeter and I don't have a torque spec on it. I'm finding it very difficult to find any torque specs for Ducati. So it is a crush washer. I'm going to keep an eye on it and think about what it felt like getting it off. And we're going to stop right there. Felt a little bit of crush action there. All right. And that's it. So now it's time to fill her up. All right. And now it's just time to add the oil. So this is where you're going to add the oil. And of course, the oil that I'm using is exactly what is recommended. All right. And if we look here, we have um, Shell Advance SAE 15W50 Ultra 4T. So I'm putting in exactly what's recommended by Ducati. So let's go ahead and fill this up and see where our levels are. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that this says that this particular system holds 4.8 quarts. However, during a regular oil change, they expect you to change approximately 4.4 quarts. I went ahead and bought five quarts just in case. And let's see where I end up. And as you can see, I just put four full quarts in and it's actually shown that it's over full. That's because I didn't run the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to run the engine and I'm going to bring it back in, let it sit for a little bit and check it again. I have the center stand so that this thing is level. Okay. Just giving you a heads up. Okay, so I just ran the engine, and as you can clearly see, uh, it pulled the level down, all right? So now I'm letting it sit for a little bit. I can see that there's a small level. It's literally just at the refill level, so it looks like I'm going to need probably exactly what they say, probably 0.4 of a quart. Let's go ahead and add that and see where we end up. All right, let's fire it up again. Okay, so there you have it. It was about 4.7-ish quarts. So when you're going to do an oil change, make sure that you purchase five quarts of oil. Ran it twice, made a little adjustment. The level's up a little bit above the line. Not bad. I think I know what the dealer did during the first oil change. They just put all five quarts in and said, screw it, because I was full all the way to the top. I really didn't have a level to look at except um, when it was on its side a little bit on the kickstand. Anyway, so now it's time to get the bolts in and put this pan on. But again, you have to make sure that you absolutely 100% double check for leaks every single place. I hope that you wiped everything completely dry after you put it in and check for leaks once, twice, three times before you go ahead and put the uh, cover back on. All right, so this is where we're going to check for leaks. Um, there's nothing on the ground at all. I checked up underneath here. It's dry as a bone. Everything looks good in this area. So now it's time to put this back on there. All right, that'll do it. Yeah.